Hi one, hope you're doing well from wherever you're watching this channel, depending on your time zone. Now, yesterday, April announced that the consumption of kerosene, super petrol, and diesel has suffered a sharp decline in consumption. That tells you that they are not making money, they are not collecting in terms of taxes. It means they are not meeting their targets. That's why they are coming out also to complain. It means that there is enough fuel, but the consumption is low. So they are making some noise. And you wonder, what were they anticipating when they proposed to increase the price of fuel by 16% in the Finance Bill, which turned to Finance Act 2023? What was the anticipating anticipation? Kwan watu kama David D and the team who are economic advisors to William Ruto were not able to tell Ruto that an increase in price can lead to reduce purchasing power. Ukipandisha bei basi matumizi yake pia inarudi chini kwa sababu people are now cost cutting on so many things that is the truth but it has taken them too much long to realize this in fact the complaint is coming at a time when we were just celebrating the long holiday people were in vacation they were in long leave Christmas time is the longest vacation ever for many people so that is the time they spend more on many things. But they are complaining not to talk at Christmas happened to me that consumption has gone low. So they have done their comparison and they're learning that things are going in a wrong direction. And the other things we are seeing Ruto bringing in place, other suggestion is bringing in place, which now reveals the reason why he is doing so. Because the biggest target and area where the government or any government normally collect money, it is through putting taxes on fuel. And above all, that's where you touch on economy because fuel defines the economy since or simply because we depend on transport of goods and service from one area to another. Now, before we go deep into this, just a quick request for those who are watching and you have not yet, not yet subscribed, please consider subscribing to our channel subscribers. Master, thank you so much. And again, to all our viewers, please give this video a thumbs up. Thank you so much and back to this discussion. By the way, before I forget, yesterday we were doing, not yesterday, for the last three days, we have been running a program to raise some funds to help a needy student to go back to school, Martin Agalomba. And uh, in our wisdom, in our wisdom, we thought that it is better for him to join the boarding section because they have both boarding a day so he needed like 40,000 Kenyan shillings to be in a boarding section I want to use this opportunity to thank each and everyone who contributed his own shilling to support that boy on his behalf I'm saying so much thank you we were able to raise 48,820 Kenyan shillings and that money is enough to take him to school and we are clearing the whole year school fees this one is now a form four so it's, it was just a one year uh, demand so we have achieved it i want to thank each and everyone may good god keep on blessing you now back to this discussion look at what is happening and start asking yourself questions why did Ruto decide to make suggestion that he want to come to your village at your farm and start taxing farm produce? Why is Ruto suggesting that he want to come to your farm and start taxing livestock, cattle, goat, sheep, chicken? Kwa ngombe walisema ni elefu moja, kwa kuku wakasema 60 shillings, kwa mbuzi wakasema miasita. Why is he coming for that? 
Why is he suggesting to start charging ID? That when you go and register for ID, you have to pay 1,000. Now, when one of us talk at high school, why is he coming for all this? It is maybe because some of his tax measures have failed. His targeted areas are failing. And one of the biggest target, it was on fuel. Fuel is the only way you can get quick money. Sasa kuna maswali wa Kenya wamekuwa kijiuliza ambayo Ruto labda hakujiuliza labda kwa kiburi. Why should I spend 10,000 fueling a car? Then I'm traveling from Kakamega to Nairobi. When I can pay 1,600 and use the public uh, uh, these buses those are the questions the Canadians are asking themselves cost of living has gone high kwa nini niweke mafuta kwa gari 1000 million yende Nairobi kutoka Kakamega when i can spend 1600 and i will be in Nairobi <laughs> because of that people are deciding that heri weka gari yake parking atumie public means of transport upon the bus and Nairobi in that way, wamepoteza pesa ngapi kwa ushuru? People are asking themselves, instead of all of us driving the car, why can't we do car pooling? That means we fuel one of our friends' car, then tuachana na magari yetu kae nyumbani, tupande hiyo moja na tuende Nairobi tufiki. <laughs> so instead of like four people coming uh, driving their own car going to Nairobi, they just fuel one of the cars. Na watu wanne wote wakakumeka kwa gari moja wameenda Nairobi. Pesa ngapi wamesema? Like 30,000. Hao wangekuwa wametumia. Na ni ushuru ngapi alikuwa amepata hapa kwa 30,000? Huge amount because he's cutting 16%. Pesa kubwa. <laughs> so wamemwambia ngo hiyo pesa haiko. Kenyans have discovered a way to survive. And they are really using that way to make sure that they are surviving this economic hardship that we are in as of now so ikisema watu wengi watumie mafuta oh diesel haitumiki sana oh petrol haiendi hata paraffin haiendi people are just surviving so when you are increasing taxes you should have asked a question is it a figure that is reasonable affordable acceptable mambo kama hayo hawakujiuliza maswali kama hayo now who is the biggest loser here we we are just trying to survive sasa tano mtu alikuwa anafika tu tano anachukua taxi kama hizo uba sasa hizi si mtu mmoja wanashikana watu kama watatu then wana, wana book taxi uba anakuja wanaingia ndani wanaenda kazi Sasa uba ngapi zingekuwa zimetransport watu? Tatu. Sasa ni mo mfana hiyo kazi. So hizo zingine mafuta reduction in consumption because demand has gone low. People have just learned how to survive, to live small. Mambo yamefika hapo. So when Ruto thought that he's smart, Kenyans are more smarter than him. If he thought he collect huge taxes in Fuel. Now he has to learn that things might just even go against his wish, and that's what is happening here. So, kwanza watu wa epra, wakati koti am um, um, okay amrata um, lepeleka koti keti eh? kesi koti. Wakasema yakuamba wamepea na court order to stop operationalization of the 2023 finance bill, which is now finance act. Until the matter has been heard and determined in the court. Watu wa epra walienda mbio wakapandesha beya mafuta in the following night. Hawako, they never respected court order. Nona bile mambo ilienda. Kwa kiburi chao. Sasa matokeo ndio haya. Matokeo ndio haya. So it is good you think also. Respect court orders. You have to learn that these are Kenyans. <clears throat> Make things favorable so that they can afford and live a dignified life. 
So people have to do cost cutting. Ndio maana sasa ameanza mpango mwingine wa kuja kwa village kwanza kuambia mkulima ya kwamba I need 5% of your farm produce on any sale that you make and get 100 shillings. 5 shillings is mine, William Ruto. Hapo ndio anatuambia sasa. Atumepoteza ID yako ukuja na 2000, sababu anataka ushuru wa aina hiyo. And many other things. Ukiuza ngombe yako ama kwa ngombe moja kwa mwaka mzima uleta 1000. Kuku 60 shillings. Wakati yeye alikuwa anafuga kuku, nani alikuwa anamtoza ushuru? Atuambie. So they have decided that they will use the wheelbarrow to move to the village to use it to collect taxes from us. Hayo ndio mambo ya wheelbarrow and indeed we are in wheelbarrow economy. I don't know your views but let us meet in the comment section to continue this discussion. Thank you so much and see you in our next video.